For today's video, we're going to be looking at the new Slacking EX. Now, Slacking can only attack if there's an EX or V Pokemon in play, but it has the very enticing Great Swing attack for two colorless energy. You deal 280 damage and discard an energy from this Pokemon. As we know, 280 damage is a fantastic number at dealing with V Star Pokemon as well as basic EXs. And there are actually quite a good number of selling points around Slacking EX. First of all, Slack Off and Vigoroth are colorless Pokemon, which means we can use Fan Rotom's Fan Call to get multiple base into play, that means we should have no trouble getting our Slack off and Pidgey down, even just from one Buddy Buddy Poffin. But there's also a pretty promising single price slacking as well, which for three colorless energy deals 240 damage. So we have a really nice single prize reversal energy option in the deck as well. This is going to be a fantastic card to weave in against some of those aggressive racing two prize matchups, and could be a great way for us to offset that race. Because we're utilizing those reversal energy, Luxray can also come into the deck list as well, giving us some interesting lightning type coverage for the likes of Lugia V. Star, Palkia V-Star, and Opposing Pidgeot, which is another nice bonus of the list. Pidgeot EX is a natural include because we have that fan call, and it's so great at finding those special energies for us. The list in front of you is quite heavy on those double turbo energy, but we do still have counter gain, and reversal energy does work on our slacking EX, just to pay that single energy requirement when we're behind on prizes. And at the same time, we have Defiance Band for double turbo for synergy, and just in case, we also have the Kieran damage mod option as well. Beyond that, it's a fairly straightforward stage two shell that we've seen in the likes of Dragapult and Charizard, with the Rotom V, the Luminion, the Forest Seal Stone and Heavy Arvin package, with a ton of ball search in the list as well. One of the star players I found of the 60 is the Roxanne. Because we're constantly discarding energy from our slacking, it's really important to sit on those high hand sizes to make sure we can close games, even with things like Quick Search developed, because you very often need to find an energy in addition to your gusting effect to close games. Notably, we are playing two Stadium cards. We definitely need to have bounces to Temple of Sinnoh. At the moment, we're going for Collapse just to get rid of the likes of Fish and Rotom for those more difficult prize maps. And I'm also weaving in the League Headquarters to give this deck a really nice boast into the single prize racing matchups. So this is the 60 we're rocking with, but I will discuss some changes after playing a few more games at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. But for now, enjoy the games. If you're looking for PTCG live codes, make sure you check out the Town store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using that code OmniPoke. So getting into our first game then, Jack is gonna be playing Lugia on the right and gets to go first and has that Raikou V lead. And I have a slack off start. Jack's gonna kick things off with a capturing aroma and just get a tails. So can grab himself a basic and that's gonna lead him to Squawkabilly EX. So he may have some Archaeops that you can discard, or at least ways towards them. You can see he's debating what's best here. Raikou not necessarily the worst lead, it can put on some pressure for a few energy attachments, but may commit the legacy early. Jack's gonna have a look and see what energies are available to him. Maybe that's uh, a sign of having to throw away a few energies here from his initial hand. He may just not have much to work with. Haven't really had a good sight of it just yet. Um, is going to Mezagoza and then does get the head flip there, so can find a Chops. So that's worked pretty nicely for him. That's going to be an easy discard with Squawkabilly. Yeah, a few energy in that hand. May want to commit one to the active here. Just have the option of attacking. Attaching to the bench is also fairly valid, but is going to go to the Raikou in the end. And it is double Chops in the discard pile, so that's pretty nice from the Squawk and Seize. That's done... A pretty good checkpoint for him. Has a Minchino to bench as well here. He's holding on to some supporters for next turn. Can get the cheeky fleet footed in. And we'll just pass things over to us. I did see a Buddy Buddy Poffin in my opener at the very least. So I can get lots of basics rolling. One of the big strengths of slacking is that the majority of the deck is going to be colourless. So we can take advantage of the Fan Rotom. As you can see that's going to be the search alongside a Pidgey here. So I can ensure that I have lots of slack off. Uh, nicely prepared as well as a Rotom. I'm going to flip the Mezagoza and then choose to use the Fan Rotom after the fact. One of the cool things is the Stage 1 Vigoroth has below 100 hit points, so we can also grab that. And I'm just debating whether or not I want another Pidgey here or another Slack Off. It's going to be a Pidgey in the end. Just making sure there aren't too many dangerous attacks on Vigoroth. There really aren't too many dangerous attacks. <laughs> I think it's 60 plus uh, coin flip for more damage. Um, I am going to Jet to try and protect the Slack off. 
Um, but rather than swinging with the fan Rotom, I'm still just going to draw with Rotom, I would imagine here. I think my last debate is whether or not I want to remove the stadium. I don't have access to my stage twos right now, so I think I actually need to keep the stadium around. So I'm just going to draw the three from Rotom. I know it's risky to leave the Mezzagoza open for Jack, but he has already discarded two of the chops anyway. So I figured it wasn't too big of a deal. It shouldn't be too difficult for him to get access to what he needs here. Camera's just having a bit of trouble focusing, but it is getting back to it here. Jack quickly going to fail a vessel. This is the build with the one lightning energy in it, of course, but looks like Jack prized it. So we'll have to commit a legacy if he wants to attack with Raikou V, which is at least something, but he did draw into the legacy so he can manually attach it here. And now from the research, he doesn't even need to find V star, although has found an aroma. So can go for it, does hit the heads, which means he will be able to summon out some chops. This turn with the Lugia V star find. He's also able to bundle, and that does push away the fan rotum. I did get double Pidgey though, so I don't hate losing one. Jack is going to summon out the chops. And then we'll start searching the deck with Primal Turbo. It's going to swing a couple on to Minchino. And we'll chops again. Gonna start loading up Lugia as well on the bench. And can finally just end on a draw from Raikou before getting the one prize in. And he is gonna do so. All right, so we go back into the Rotom. And I think we really need help from Mezagoza here. It does get Tails, which is really unfortunate. You can see I'm holding on to Candy. I do have Candy Pidgeot, but Leaving this Raikou up means that I really don't want to go Candy Pidgeot this turn. So instead, I'm going to go for a boss's orders on the Minchino here to take a single prize KO with the Fan Rotom. The camera's all over the place in this game. Hopefully, it uh, decides to fix itself. <laughs> really have to apologize for this. We are obviously at the table playing, so uh, I'm hoping things do fix themselves. This is the first time looking over the footage. There we go. We get back to where we need to do. I didn't actually make any actions. I was just thinking that time. Uh, again, I'm debating the uh, stadium bounce or not. Once again, I'm keeping Mezzagoza around on the off chance I can candy into a slacking. Um, and again, I'm not too worried about Jack searching many Pokemon out now. As you can see, the uh, this Chinchino was an option for him, but not great. He is going to get the Iron Handsy X, though. Um, and this is possible because, you know, there's the basic lightning in this list. So he is revving up the hands with three colorless energy. Does that mean he took lightning from prizes? Yes, he did. So there you go. There's the Iron Hands. He can then boss up Pidgey, and that's pretty awkward. You can get the cheeky Fleet-Footed card in, and then is going to remove my main engine, which is a real shame here, and take two prizes in the process as well, of course. The only good news is this is a two-prize Iron Hands, I suppose. I can go into the Vigor off. And I still have access to this Mezagoza, and it still gets Tails. Triple Tails on the Mezagoza, really not helpful for me, because that's really the thing I'm lacking here. <laughs> it really makes life more difficult for me. I think I might have to punt now with a supporter. I'm finally going to bounce to the stadium, which has done absolutely nothing. I'm going to burn a Cologne, and then we're going to Iron O for six, and really hope for the best. I did have Reversal Energy in hand, but that commits me to finding the single prize slack off, uh, slacking, I should say. And it looks like I did find Ultra Ball Double Turbo, but I think it's alongside a lot of other Double Turbos, which is really awkward. So yeah, I have to get rid of one Double Turbo, which is never great. You're limited on your resources. You have to remove these energy as you go if you are swinging with the EX. So not ideal for me, but you got to do what you got to do here. And I think I'm going to be stamping uh, Jack here, most likely. Yeah, we're going to swing the second Double Turbo energy on and then just stamp myself for five cards. It's mostly about getting myself cards because we know that there's the Gift Elegy on the Iron Hands EX, but um, it's really just about trying to piece more things together here. But we can get a great swing in and deal with the Iron Hands EX. And level up the prize trade at the very least. And Jack probably has to look towards some gust here. I'm have to get around the slacking maybe more than once this game because of the size of it and just the fact that we dealt with the Minchino earlier means that Jack doesn't really have a high damage output option. 
possibly weird here. I think Jack's having a look at his energy, seeing if that would be a line he could take. Yeah, he's actually doing the totting up now to see if with the jet energy in hand, possibly it's reasonable to try and weave it in, but it might commit too many energy. Might mean that he would like have to use Blood Moon or Saluna, but that would be vulnerable to trapping plays if he commits every single energy. So it might be Luminion for Gust here instead. You can definitely see Jack thinking about it. There's Pheasantipity as an option as well. He's starting to line up these Archaeops as well. So he's definitely thinking about what this turn needs to be here. Whether it is going to deal with slacking or not. I suppose the risk would be that I can look at his discard pile, count up energy, and then maybe I can make a like Gust Pass play into his Lugia or something along those lines. So he's going to fail the Ultra Ball. Then he's going to Raikou for one. I think it was another energy, which might hurt his Archaeops plays, actually. But he's going to jet into the Lugia at the very least. Is he just going to hold off on any use of chops here? Well, he has boss's orders, so he can bring up a few options. I mean, the Rotom puts him down to one prize. It might be a question of if there are any boss's orders prized. Let's go for the slack, game, uh, slack off, though. Now he's thinking about chops. No, Jack's going to change his mind and go to the Rotom V instead. Put himself down to one. He is going to get a double turbo energy out of the deck and just put it onto a Raikou. Hand thins a Nest Ball. No, it's going to hold onto the Nest Ball. <laughs> and it's going to choose to get rid of the League Headquarters. A little bit surprised Jack didn't go for Fez here. Um, on the bench with that Nest Ball. Just for a bit of protection, because there's no gift energy on the active right now. So maybe there's a chance I can swing with Slacking EX and um, Iona at the same time and make life difficult for Jack to Gust. Let's see, I can... Looks like I'm eyeing up a Roxanne here. I did have the counter game for my Slacking EX, so I, what I'm looking for is to hit one of my Reversal Energies. Because Reversal Energy does work on... The EX. It's just a colorless energy when you attach it to a EX Pokemon. And that's perfect for me to deal with this uh, Lugia. I am going to get six, and then I'm going to get three more draws from the Pheasantipity that I benched as well. Looking for a reversal energy here desperately. Um, looks like I drew into some ball search cards. There's a Luxray, but that doesn't really change what I need this turn. Let's see, three more from Fez. Oh, I hit the forest, so forest can get me an energy. So we're going for KO with slacking EX and hoping to be large here. I think we have to go with EX, uh, just based on the amount of energy remaining. Rather than going into the single prize slacking, I've already spent my jet energy earlier on in the game, and you don't want him to be sleeping and trapped. Jack Draws does have Ultra Ball, though, so still has Fish and Boss. So the Roxanne didn't quite get us there. He had the help from the Raikou. But yeah, was still able to close out the game there. We tried to put the Lugia in an awkward position, but they still had what they needed to get over the line. So next up, it's going to be Jack on Raging Bolt, and he's going to get a Mulligan. And I'm going to be going first. We start with the Fan Rotom, which is absolutely phenomenal. Again, just essentially having six Buddy Buddy Poffins in the deck is a really nice feeling. It does give you a little bit more license to go first, I suppose. Um, but I think Jack actually won the flip and made me go first regardless. I think it's still reasonable to go second with slacking into a number of matchups, but um, I'm holding on to Ultra Ball Candy. I have a number of energy as well, so a pretty decent hand to uh, pass on here. And that's the beauty of the fan call. Jack has a, a poker stop here. Does find the Prime Catcher. It's going to throw away some more grass energy. He's lacking the sort of right energy for his Sada, but there's at least some deck thinning here. Dealing with a Pidgeot would be a little bit awkward for me. I'm holding on to... Yeah, my hand's really good. I've got Arvin, Ultra Ball, Candy. Lots of energy. Uh, we are going to see a Night Stretcher. So Jack can remove the fighting energy now, which makes his Sada much stronger. Also going to see a Nest Ball. I think I saw 
a Squawker Billy and another Raging Bolt in Jack's hand. So things have really opened up here. Yeah, certainly some more basics. He's going to get a quick Teal Dance in. That finds another Night Stretcher, which is a little awkward, but I think on balance, because you have this early Prime Catcher, yeah, to deny a Pidgey definitely seems pretty good. Nothing to Palpad in, um, so it's just going to Squawk and Seize the lot away. Does find the Sarda, so can attach the Fighting Energy now to get the attack in. See what else Jack's working with. Does have Nespal that he's eyeing up. A few basics in the hand, to be fair. It's whether or not he wants to put another Ogre Pond down or not, really. And where's he going to take this energy off of? He's just going to not respect the fact that I could steal slacking without Pidgeot and just take it off the bench here. Uh, but slacking has a number of ways of dealing with this 240. Obviously, the EX can do it, but also the. Uh, Single prize, and straight away we see candy slacking into reverse energy. So I will be able to use the big, uh, what's it called? Slacker's head strike for 240 damage. And I'm even able to Arvon here for Forest Hill Stone. And is it going to be a Poffin? Yeah, we're going to reload even more Slack off here as well as another Pidgey. That means I get to hold on to that Ultra Ball for the Forest Hill Stone. which is fantastic. We're going to get the response KO on the Raging Bolt, and we are going to sleep, and it's a double tails. The ability of slacking means you flip two coins, very similar to the old Snorlax. Jack's going to bounce back with a Sada here. And we'll get some additional cards in. Shouldn't have too difficult of a time taking out this slacking. But it's just that awkward situation where we know he has to take another single prize KO at this point, and then he'll still be a number of KOs away. Whereas I have a pretty easy 2-2-2. Two, two, two. This should be one of the boasts of slacking, really. Especially the way we've built the list with the two single prize slacking. You can represent the single prize board quite nicely, and then as long as you can get that chain of attacks, be in good shape. Chat's going to energy retrieval, then Greninja away at grass immediately, before teal dancing one more. Jack is amassing a strong hand here. Going to see a turn attachment of lightning to the active. He's gripping onto catchers. I don't hate just taking out the slacking, honestly. Uh, and just saving the gust. Because you don't actually mind if I go into a Pidgeot. That's another two prizes that will be on the board for him. Because he's going back to even prizes, right? So he wants to then go for a Pidgeot EX and a slacking EX, ideally. So I don't hate just holding onto the gust. Definitely his last debate here. And it also just forces me to spend more rare candies and whatnot as well, right? So I definitely like the choice of just going for the active. Let's see where I can go from here. We know I have the Forest Seal Stone. Just picked up the Unfair Stamp. I have Ultra Ball. So can I Ultra Ball Luminion candy into anything here and make an attack happen? Let's have a look. It's going to be a Pheasant Dippity to start things off. Going to be a double turbo to the active and then an unfair stamp. Okay, so we're stamping first and hoping that the unfair stamp five cards plus the Fez plus three helps me out that little bit more. Um, I suppose we're also disrupting Jack a little bit, but he does have Fez on board regardless. He will be shuffling his hand in a moment. He's just sorting out the stream. This was going on over a, uh, a tournament weekend. Ooh, not the... Is that the... Did I get the... Night Stretcher plus Candy here. Am I missing a piece? Ooh, okay, so we do hit Ultra Ball. So I might still be able to Candy into a Slack here. Big Slack EX. So I think I've got what I needed to carry on in this game. Keep up with the tempo. Going to get rid of a Poffin and a Slack off in the process. And there's Candy Slacking. 
I think I have Night Stretcher in hand, which is why I'm fanning everything out to see if I want anything back. But we are just going to do a great swing for the KO, going down to two prize cards remaining. Let's see how Jack fared off the unfair stamp. Well, I think it's Asada as one of his cards, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Is Jack just debating... Uh, well, he's going to Fez for three first before benching this uh, Raging Bolt. Then he's going to bench one for some Sada value. Gripping onto a decent chunk of cards now. Going to see the Retrieval for some grass. Ogapon can chip in. Ooh, interesting. Now his catcher. Might be reasonable for him to go through the Fez just to deny me card draw. I've gone through a few energy now. I don't have Pidgeot in play, so it may be difficult for me to chain an attack. How many energy have I lost? One double turbo, I think, and one reversal energy. So that's going to see a quick trekking shoe and keep the card. Stick gear. Going to see a manual attach, and he is going big. Going to KO the slacking. Go down to two prizes left himself. I'm going to go slack off. Let's see if I can close the game here. We're even on prizes, so I can't use um, the single prize slacking. I have to use an EX here. I have to find double turbo energy. I've definitely got some decent pieces. I'm going to Arvin first here. I can go Nespel Forest. Nespel gets me fish. Forest gets me... Is that the last piece I need? Double turbo energy coming to the hand. I think, yeah, with Night Stretcher, we can candy slack and get that great swing in. That is one of the matchups that I think you're happy to see as slacking. Not always guaranteed, but we have means of taking those aggressive prizes with single prizes, and that's always a recipe for success in this matchup. So for our final game, we're going to be squaring off against Charizard EX. I think this is where we're going to start seeing some of the weaknesses of slacking. I think that great swing damage output is phenomenal into V-Star matchups and basic EX matchups, but far from it against the Stage 2s where you just don't have that same reach, especially the list that we've looked at, and we'll talk about some changes we can make at the end of the video, but my start's not great either. I have Pidgey Pidgey Pass, so no access to Ball Search or Fan Rotom, nothing like that. And Jack has quite the opposite, has the Arvin Poffin can get another Charmander developed and that Rotom, so really, really strong Zard start, which is terrifying, to be honest. We know Zard comes on stronger in the late game, but can also target our basics uh, throughout the game with that Dust Noir. Jack debating the Forest Hill Stone will eventually swing it on and then see three more cards from Rotom V here. As things pass over to us, I do have Candy Pidgeot, so that's something. And obviously we play four copies of Double Turbo, and I can actually call his Tenacity to find one. <laughs> so I can initiate a race here with Pidgeot swinging in. And then I can quick search for Poffin maybe, I imagine. Yeah, it is going to be Poffin, so we can get some slack off down. So even without slacking, we will be able to initiate some pressure. Now the concern is that there's Dust and shenanigans that could be afoot next turn and maybe this Pidgeot goes down. That would be absolutely terrible for me. But, you know, it's not too unrealistic when Jack has that 7 card hand plus Rotom as well, so... Uh, sorry, the Forest Seal Stone on the Rotom already, so... That's a bit of a concern. Uh, I do end up putting the Collapse into play, maybe just trying to limit some of Jack's options in the future. And we are just going to take the one prize KO. And Jack goes into Charmander, which might mean he doesn't have access to Pidgeot. So that's my hope, at least. He's going to get a quick Fez three cards. Didn't see too much help. It's the Radzard of Fire Energy and something else. Can he get into big Zardy X here and start swinging? Ideally, he's doing it with Dust Noir as well. He's definitely got some options. I, I see Ball Search, I see what support is in his hand. Well, here's Ultra Ball coming in. So Jack's gonna Ultra Ball for Pidgeot. Can Candy Pidgeot, this is really dangerous. Does that mean he's gonna be triple candying this turn? I know he's got access to the Dust Noir. He's gonna attach the Charmander. Oh, is he taking a risk? Wow, he's gambling with the Iono. 
He has Quick Search and Forest, so there's still a chance he can do a lot here. But I think he had a guaranteed means of Charizard plus Dust Noir from his hand. He had Candy, he had Ultra Ball, so he could have gone, and he had the Dust Noir in hand. So he could have taken out the Pidgeot, and this six is terrible. It, he had pretty good odds, to be fair. Any Charizard, any Candy, any Dust Noir gets him at least like attacking this turn. Now he might just have to swing with a Charizard. So that's a big miss from the Iono. You can see why he wanted to go down this route. He wanted to also get Pidgeot. He wanted to have this cake and eat it too, but he ended up having nothing. <laughs> but taking out my Pidgeot would have been pretty big there, no doubt. And I think I should be safe now. In the end, he's had to quick search and flip the forest just to get this Charizard swing. He can, of course, use Dust Noir later and still finish off the Pidgeot. So it's not like a completely lost cause, but definitely not the turn he was hoping for from uh, sitting on such a great hand. It's a bit of a let off, really, for me. Let's see how my six card hand is looking. Can we get towards... I mean, a Pidgeot attack isn't the worst here, but it's definitely not ideal. I think dealing with a Duskull would be great. I'm going to get rid of a counter gain and a League Headquarters for the Slacking EX. And we are going to Candy Slack. Then we're going to Arvin as well, so not too bad at all. I'm going to pick up an Unfair Stamp, looks like, for a following turn. And also Nest Ball here. It's going to be Nest Ball for Fez. So I'm really, really loading up for the following turn. <laughs> this Pidgeot's going to come in with Quick Search as well here. And I am going to swing Double Turbo onto Slacking. Uh, but we're going to make the most out of Pidgeot and just get the attack in. See what Jack can construct here. Again, still could be a crazy turn. Does have candy in hand now, so he can do all sorts. Ooh, interesting. We see the Thornton Rotom out Charmander in. Your candy Dusk Noir KO active and then do something with the bench, but he's not able to boss this turn. He's just used Thornton, so he can't like counter catch or anything. Let's see what he's going to grab here from Quick Search. Oh, it's going to be the Counts Catcher. So maybe Counts Catch Fez. Take the two. Again, the Pidgeot's then still open for him to Dust Noir later. Definitely seems reasonable. Deny some of my draw. I'm going to see a manual attachment. Yep, yeah, Fez is coming up. And Jack's going to take his two quite nicely. Passings over to me. I did grab the unfair stamp last turn, so both players pretty much expecting what was coming, but still a strong option for me. Take out Charizard whilst unfair stamping. Even with Fez and Pidgeot on board, maybe it makes him grab a piece rather than grabbing Dust Noir combination cards. I do grab a Nest Ball, which isn't too bad. Can get another slack off here by the looks of things. Oh, interesting. I'm going to go for a Rotom. Just keep my outs open. I think I still have Forest unflipped, so I want to still have the option to grab energy at some point if this quick search goes down. And then after the unfair stamp, I still have my supporter to play, so then we Iono for a fresh five. Didn't see much help from the first five. Gonna burn a cancelling clone. <laughs> and then we're going to quick search. And what's going to be here? Didn't quite see what we grabbed, but we know the Slacking EX is going to come in and finish off this Charizard right? We know that much. Okay, so it's just another Candy Slack. And it's going to be the Great Swing coming in once again. Let's 
Let's see how the Iono treated Jack. Well, he can Fez first for three cards. Ooh, I see Ultra Ball. I see Dust Noir. Are things coming together for a big turn here? Jack could actually win this turn with... Uh, well, he's holding on to Boss. Can he Dust Noir pop plus Boss? The Rotom plus Pidgeot. It was a risk for me putting this Rotom down. So proactively. But I suppose at the time I was doing it pre-stamp, wasn't I? Was I doing it pre-Iono? I can't remember. Either way. Jack has access to Nest Ball as well. Can he get Radzard into the mix if he uses Dust Noir here? Yeah, I think that's what's going through his head. If you Pidgeot for a Candy, Candy Dusk, Pop Pidge, then I go down to two prizes and then he can Boss. Oh, so it goes Arvin. No, not going to go Arvin. Yeah, I think Boss is part of his win. He need, Yeah, he needs a Nest Ball here. <laughs> I'm pretty certain he has it with... Uh... With Radzard. Well, we're going to quick search first and have a look. Definitely needs to take the candy for the Dust Noir. Uh, and yeah, as long as he has access to that Radzard. I don't think he discarded it earlier. There is the Dust Noir pop on Pidgeot. He's going to see the two prizes. Does that unlock anything? Yeah, do you see the Nest Ball? I think we finally got there, yeah. <laughs> There's Radzard coming in. You can attach and boss the Rotom. There we go. For a nice win with Charizard there. Yeah, maybe a risk for me to put the Rotom down in that instance. I basically just was expecting my Pidgeot EX to get knocked out in one way or another. And I wanted to have access to just a chain of energy still. Because I was probably still a couple swings away there from closing the game. So I wanted access to those energy and not miss out there. But uh, let's get into some other options for the deck. There are certainly some other interesting options for Slacking EX that I'm definitely going to consider coming into the 60. Boomerang Energy is just another fantastic special energy this deck gains access to, where you get to simply put the energy back onto your Slacking EX, and that's a pretty appealing concept. There's also the option to move away from Pidgeot EX or have a thin line in combination with Noctowl coming into the 60 and having a Terrapagos. We're naturally already playing for double turbo energy and naturally need to play a few stadiums to get around Temple of Sinnoh anyway. So there could be reason to add Terrapagos into the list. But at that point, I do think we're just going to be a less consistent build of Terrapagos Dust Noir. One cool payoff of that archetype, though, could be the option to have Glass Trumpet and Basic Energy to make it easier for you to chain your Great Swings and could allow you to have possibly Radiant Charizard in the deck list with Basic Fire Energy or a Monkey Dory and Darkness Energy in the decklist to give you a little bit more damage output. Speaking of which, that brings us on to the sort of elephant in the room in that Slacking is not very good at dealing with the opposing Stage 2s of the format. We don't have that reach onto the Charizards, the Dragapults, the Gardevoirs. That being said, though, you could change the Unfair Stamp to a Maximum Belt to really ramp up that Great Swing option. At the moment, you can see that we have Defiance, Counter Gain as some of the main tools we look towards, but if we have some more Energy Acceleration in the decklist, Again, looking towards that Glass Trumpet, possibly Crispin in the list, or even just Boomerang Energy sort of accumulating over a number of turns with extra attachments, we might be able to push a Slacking EX with Max Belt into KO range. But that starts to become a big combination, so it still may not be all that consistent, especially when the Dragapult EX is probably still going to be pressurizing those Pidgey. Overall, Slacking's going to be one of these cards which I don't think is going to be a constant in the format, but if you pick the right tournament when there's plenty of basic racing archetypes and Stage 1 V-Stars, that's when Slacking is going to be fantastic. But Slacking is pretty woeful into the other Stage 2s of the game, so overall it might just have less selling points than the current best options in Charizard, Dragapult, and Gardevoir. Let me know your thoughts on this archetype down below. What do you think about the decklist and the possible changes that I've just suggested? I'll hear your thoughts down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Cheers.